New York Giants week number 15 game preview against the Cleveland Browns and uh, this is going to be a tough matchup. The Giants might not have their starting quarterback Daniel Jones for the second time in three games. Kind of re-injured himself or kind of had a new injury I think it was. An ankle injury came out on like Monday or Tuesday. The Giants admitted Daniel Jones had another injury he was dealing with. Um, I think he may have practiced limited this week but still it's, it's kind of up in the air whether he'll play or not. If not it's Colt McCoy so we'll find out. But hey it's a Colt, uh, Colt McCoy revenge game. He was drafted by the Browns in like 2010 so I mean there is a lot of revenge game narratives in this game uh, I tweeted about that like BJ Goodson's a Brown Olivier Vernon Dion Lewis was once a Brown um, there's a lot of guys that were you know a lot of ties here and of course Freddie Kittens our, our play caller of this game because Jason Garrett being out is also a former Brown former coach of theirs all right so for the Giants offense Daniel Jones or Colt McCoy I hope it's Daniel Jones. I mean, you sometimes hear these people say that, like, the Giants are better off with Colt McCoy. I That makes no sense. If Daniel Jones is healthy enough to play, he's playing. He gives them the better chance to win, let's be honest. So, on defense, Cleveland allows 368 total yards on defense, 249 passing yards per game, and 114 rushing yards per game. So, they're not too great, not too bad in certain categories. The thing that scares me about Cleveland is their defensive line. We'll get to that later, but... The Giants need to stick to the run game here and get it going early because when they played the Cardinals, they had a weird approach where they came out and passed the ball a lot with an injured quarterback. And the Cardinals, just like the Browns, are not the best team against the run. I think they're league average as well. So the Giants have to come out with an approach of let's try and run the ball, have an even approach, passing the ball, running the ball an even amount, and try to, at the end of the game, maybe get to 30 rush attempts, 30 pass attempts, and try to even things out. That's what I hope. If the Giants get down, of course, that kind of changes everything. But in a neutral game script, assuming things uh, stay close, you would hope they try and have more running attempts because why not? It's been working the past two months or so with Wayne Gallman and Alfred Morris. Um, so Cleveland has a lot of difficulty covering tight ends. So if Evan Engram plays, which he is questionable now, he popped up late on the injury report, if he plays, he's definitely a, a dynamic tight end that the Giants have to get involved. He had like four targets and two catches last week. Not enough. So the Giants have to get him involved against a team that has a lot of trouble covering tight ends. We know B.J. Goodson's not a coverage linebacker. I think their safety, Carl Joseph's not known for that as well. So, yeah, I mean, there's, it's going to be tough for them to guard a guy like Evan Engram, who's a very, you know, he's very athletic uh, tight end. We know what Evan Engram brings to the table. And their backup tight end, Caden Smith, is also on the inj injury report. So we'll see if he plays or not. Hopefully both guys suit up. That would definitely help. So... Now on to the, uh, the offensive line. So the offensive line for the Giants will have a lot of problems here, I would think, because they gave up, I forget if it was six sacks or eight sacks last week. It was a lot. I'll put it, I think it was eight because Reddick had five himself, but pretty sure the Giants surrendered eight sacks to uh, the Cardinals last week, and we saw a lot of screw-ups from Matt Pairs. We saw some screw-ups from Kevin Zeitler on stunts. We saw... Uh, Andrew Thomas, of course, had a rough game. So outside of like, you know, even Will Hernandez had one bad play or two in there. So outside of like Nick Gates and maybe even Shane Lemieux a little bit, no one really played a great game on the offensive line. They have to be a lot better. And this defensive line for Cleveland does not get much easier. You're, you're playing against Miles Garrett, possibly a top five defender in football, not just pass rusher defender. Sheldon Richardson, who, former Jet, I'm sure a lot of you guys know who Sheldon Richardson is. He's actually having a really good year for the Browns. Very underrated player. An old friend, Olivier Vernon, who has like seven or seven and a half sacks. He's had a safety in there as well. He's had a nice year, Olivier Vernon. You know, still a good trade for the Giants. I like the... Uh, Vernon for Zeitler trade looking back on it, but it sucks that he's having a good year, but we got to watch out for him again. So that's for the offense. I, I expect the Giants offense to struggle. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I think if Daniel Jones is out of this game, which is what I anticipate, I kind of lean like 60-40 that he's out. So we'll, we'll see. I mean, it's just me guessing, but I think Judge wants him to play, but based on the way he looked at the end of the uh, you know third quarter and fourth quarter last game against the Cardinals, it's kind of a tough ask for a guy like Daniel Jones. It's very hampered right now to go out and play this game. So we'll see. But I, I think with Colt McCoy, it's going to be a tough game to uh, put points on the board. And Graham Gano hopefully is automatic in this game. He might have to make some long field goals to you know get some points on the board. So it's a lot to ask for, but we'll see. For the Giants' defense, the secondary is looking pretty thin right now. So Darnay Holmes is out with the injury. James Bradbury's out with the uh, COVID close contact, and he's on the COVID list. He can't get activated in time, so he'll be out. Both guys are slot corner. A cornerback one are both out. So really, the Giants' cornerback situation now, according to Dan Duggan, basically says the Giants have to elevate 
cornerbacks, Jaron Williams, who I think, I forget who Jaron Williams is. I think he's played one game for us this year. And Quincy Wilson, who's been around for a little bit. I think he's been with the Colts and the Jets, but I don't trust either guy. So we're asking Isaac Yadam to be the cornerback one and either Quincy Wilson or Jaron Williams, I don't know who these people are, to be the cornerback too. Unless they want to move like Logan Ryan to the outside. Or Logan Ryan might be the slot guy. Or maybe they put Xavier McKinney in the slot. I don't know how they're going to do this. So it's going to be interesting to see how the Giants group that personnel in the secondary. Because there's a lot they can do. Like Julian Love's versatile. He played cornerback in college. We know McKinney's versatile. Jabril Peppers has said he could play corner if he needs to. Uh, we know Logan Ryan's versatile. He's done both in his career. So that's like four guys right there that can play both. So I'm sure the Giants will make it work, but without having Darnay Holmes and James Bradbury, it sucks for sure. So against the run, it's going to be tough because the Browns right now have two running backs that I think are on pace for over 1,000 yards each. I think Nick Chubb missed about five six games or so and you know he's still on pace for a thousand yards he has like 850 yards right now kareem hunt has like 700 and something something in the high 700s so both guys are having really great years rushing the ball so that's something to watch out for stopping the runs definitely a must in this game because that's how cleveland gets their offense going kevin stefanski their new head coach and play caller loves to run the ball and they rely on play action to get baker mayfield going so the giants kind of have to force baker mayfield to beat them but that's a concern for me because Baker Mayfield's been having a great year. He's not playing at an MVP level, but a little below that. He's having a really nice year. He hadn't thrown an interception for about two months up until last game. He threw one against Baltimore. And speaking of Baltimore in the last game the Browns played, I was rooting heavily for the Browns, not only because I bet on them, but because for the Giants, if the Browns were coming off a very hard-fought victory, I feel like there would be a better chance the Giants would catch them in this game. But with the Browns coming off that loss now... The Ram- or not the Rams, the Ravens are only one game back of them, and the Ravens hold the tiebreaker. The Browns have to start winning, so there's some urgency there for the Browns. I wish they lost West last week. Unfortunately, they did not, so it's going to be a tough ask once again for the Giants to even win this game. So the pass rush has to be much better for the Giants this week. I think we know that. We saw Dalvin Tomlinson get a sack. We saw some pressure by Carter Coffin and maybe some other people, but... Even like Leonard Williams was quiet last week, Dexter Lawrence for the most part. So, you know, guys like that have to get more involved. We have to get consistent pressure on Baker. And it's tough because a lot of it, as I said, is play action. Baker Mayfield's probably one of the least pressured quarterbacks in football this year because his offensive line is amazing. And also, like, you know, it's very tough against that scheme to get pressure. I think the Browns, I saw before, might have their guard out, Teller, Wyatt, is it Wyatt Teller or something? I don't know, it's a weird first name, but Teller, who's having a really great year, I think is out for this game, so it definitely benefits the Giants, but... You know, as I said, guys like even B.J. Hill, Austin Johnson, got to get consistent pressure, got to get to the quarterback. It's tough, and this offensive line for Cleveland is really good, but we'll see what happens. But um, So that'll do it. My score prediction for this game, I don't see the Giants. I see the Giants competing for about a half. The way I see this game going is the Giants stay competitive. The offense is not going to be good. Giants defense gets tired in the second half. Then they start to run the ball all over us. And I think eventually the Giants will get too tired on defense and the Browns will start putting up points in the third and fourth quarter, which leads me to a 24-13 score for the Browns. I think uh, I think it's pretty fair. I think the spread right now is a minus five for Cleveland, which I thought was pretty low, honestly, because I don't really see how the Giants keep this thing close for 60 minutes. I mean, as I said, they can keep it close for about, you know, a, a half, a quarter and a half or you know quarter and a half two and a half quarters but I just don't see it being a whole game of being a close game but hopefully I'm wrong we'll see uh the Giants need this one good news is that um Alex Smith was uh, announced out for this week's game for Washington when they play the Seattle Seahawks it's Dwayne Haskins now so that should be a loss I don't want to guarantee anything but it should be a loss and Washington's defense is not something to mess with but still the Seahawks should win that game hopefully so we'll go with that Um, But yes, covering the Browns receivers is going to be tough. With the backup cornerbacks we have, Jarvis Landry in the slot. We know Odell Beckham's out, which is really good news because, you know, you don't want to play him. He's, he's really good still. Donovan Peoples-Jones, their rookie, is playing a lot better. I mean, he's he's been better lately, I have to admit. And their other outside receiver, Rashard Higgins, has been there for a while, but he's now starting to play very well. So, you know, ever since Odell's been out, Higgins has had a bigger role, and he's playing well. I think the Browns get Austin Hooper back as well from injury. I think David Njoku's still there, the former first-round pick, picked near Evan Engram, actually, back in 2017. So they have a talented offense, and their defense, 
defense is beatable, but, you know, they also have a shutdown corner who's been playing great this year in Denzel Ward. So, you know, it's not like the Browns are this talentless team of the past 20 years. They're a good team now. You have to respect them. They're 9-4. and four. It's going to be a tough game. I hope I'm wrong. I just don't really see us winning this game, but we'll see. Leave in the comments your score prediction. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll talk to you guys after the game.